There are many ways to declutter a home, many different methods to get rid of items and clear up space in your home. Ways to make your belongings more organized and minimal. There is the well-known Komari method of going about this per category, doing all of it in one go. You can do a packing party like Ryan Nicodemus from The Minimalists, where you pack all your belongings in boxes as if you were moving, and only unpack the things you need to use. You can declutter per room, and there are surely many other ways to go about this. I think to master the art of decluttering, the method you're using doesn't really matter. I think the method is just a matter of preference, of trying some methods out and seeing what works for you. To declutter successfully, you need to envision your goal. Minimalism is defined very differently by different people. Some people live with as little as possible, while others keep everything that sparks joy. Some people only want useful items, while others enjoy some decor. I think defining minimalism for yourself helps with setting a decluttering goal. Your definition of minimalism says something about how you wish to live your life. Getting rid of 10 bags of garbage is not really a purposeful goal, as it doesn't say anything about how much will be left. It doesn't say anything about how you want to live your life. For me, minimalism is getting rid of excess stuff while keeping enough to live comfortably in an enjoyable way. Decluttering comes with challenges. At first, you need to find the energy to go through everything and face all of your items. Your belongings are a representation of who you are and who you used to be. It can be confronting if you're not proud of who you were or who you've become. Maybe your stuff reminds you of your childhood dreams which you tried pursuing but gave up on. Hobbies you started but never finished, which leave you with feelings of guilt. Guilt of not keeping your word to yourself and guilt of giving up on something without finishing. Going through your items and letting those items go is a very healing process. As you go through all of your items, you are processing your past and you make time to give all of those experiences a place. For me, at first I wanted to hold on to many items because I wanted to hold on to the past. Who I used to be and how things used to be. Getting rid of those items felt like I was not able to go back to that time anymore. I knew that with my mind, but not with my heart. But I learned that the past is still in the present. Every experience I've had in my life brought me where I am today. The past is still in my memory and it also made me think the way I do. It taught me the skills I have, it taught me knowledge and wisdom. It brought me together with the people around me and separated me from the people I'm no longer with. All the days I've lived are still in the present right now, right where I am. I may never be able to physically go back, but there's no need because every day I've lived is kind of a layer of who I am. I'm kind of like a growing onion, every day I grow another layer. Or like a tree, every day I grow a new ring. If we look at the situation in the face of interbeing, I still inter-am with all the past versions of myself. I am all the good things, all the bad things and far more. There has been heartache in my past, which for a long time I wished was not there. But now I realize life is not about wishing things were not the way they are. It's about learning to handle our suffering. Today there are still things that I'm sad about, but what's important is how we find peace with it. Through truly finding peace with who I am today, I was able to let go. From the moment I truly accepted myself for who I am, I no longer longed for the past, for who I was and for how things used to be. Getting rid of items attached to my past made sure I wasn't constantly pulled back mentally. Without physically letting go, it's hard to mentally let go. And without mentally letting go, it's hard to physically let go. I 
I decluttered a lot of things on my minimalism journey and I'm still decluttering occasionally. You have to maintain a decluttering habit to keep a simple home. Because if you leave your door open, stuff just walks back into your home. But also your needs may change, our hobbies may change and with that the items we need change. We add new items and to keep your house simple we should also get rid of items. There are different ways to get rid of your stuff. Different destinations, different ways of disposing them. Which I experience to be another challenge of decluttering. After decluttering I try to find a good home for the items I was getting rid of to minimize the amount of things that would end up in the trash. Because decluttering made me feel guilty about all the trash I had created. I donated to thrift stores, but you can only donate items that are still in good condition. And then you just have to hope someone picks them up. I donated quite a lot of really good items, so I'm sure some of the items found a new home. For clothing I also donated items, or I put them in recycling bins. Papers also went in the recycling, but I also had to throw a lot of stuff in the actual trash bin. Things that were no longer of any value to anyone. Which is hard to do, especially if things hold sentimental value to you. As someone who tries to be eco-friendly, you often come across people saying you should reuse things. Things are more wasteful if they are made to only be used once, for example single-use plastics. But I found that this is only partly true. Reusing is great if it prevents you from buying another item. But when something is made to be trash, there is no point in using it more often. When you have a plastic fork, sooner or later it's going to be recycled or more likely it will end up in landfill. By using the plastic fork 10 more times, it is not going to change anything about that. It might even be less healthy because those items are not made of good quality plastic. They are not made to be used and washed often, so it can even be a bad idea. So, when something is actually trash, do yourself a favor and just get rid of it responsibly. Make sure you get reusable items that will prevent you from getting disposables in the future. And the difficult thing with trash is that throwing something away also isn't really a solution. It's a man-made idea that we can just throw something away, or we can get rid of something. In nature, things decompose. In autumn, when the leaves don't serve the tree anymore, the tree lets them go. They fall on the earth and return to the earth. The natural waste actually becomes useful, nutritious soil. When we compost, we can do the same, and we can prevent waste in landfills, which is super important. But all the items I decluttered throughout the years were not compostable. When we put something in the trash, it's out of sight, out of mind. Which is what we are looking for when we are decluttering our home. We don't want the stuff, the garbage, to clutter our mind. But what we're doing is that we are actually just moving the problem elsewhere. If we once again think about the interbeing of all things, in this case, that we are one with this planet, that we are part of this planet, just as all the stuff we created, we can see that the amount of things stay the same. Things from my home just move to the trash bin, which move to the garbage truck, and eventually end up in landfill or are burned. When things end up in landfill, they are literally moved to be a problem elsewhere. And when things are burned, they transform. Simply said, when something burns, it transforms into gas and ashes. So when we look even more deeply, we can see that everything is constantly transforming. But there's not really anything going. Everything that transforms still stays part of this earth. Nothing disappears and nothing is added to this planet. Everything is just in constant transformation. So throwing things away is not really the right way to say it. We are moving things away. Moving things to clutter up elsewhere to litter up elsewhere. Which for me is a reassuring and disturbing thought at the same time. It's reassuring because nothing is really lost. The insight of interbeing can help to let things go while decluttering. When you realize everything stays on this planet, 
it is just in a different place or a different form, but it's not lost, it's easier to let go. You don't need to cling to things if you know they are not gone. They were always here and will always be here. You don't need to hold on to things just because you once loved them, and you can still love them while they are not physically with you anymore. It might make you feel lighter to let them go. And it's disturbing as well, because even with our best intentions, we can't fix our waste crisis as an individual. Whether you keep or dispose your garbage, it's going to stay garbage on this planet. The act of truly decluttering your home and living more minimal may spark an eco-consciousness in you. It made me want to better my ways. Waste created in the past is damage done, but how many waste I create in the future is up to me. This way decluttering can help you stay away from unnecessary future purchases, which at the end of the day is all we can do. We can choose a different direction for the future. Like I said in the beginning of the video, my definition of minimalism is getting rid of excess stuff while keeping enough to live comfortably in an enjoyable way. Which means I keep more than the bare necessities. I think when you only want to keep the bare necessities, you question everything you have. I have a little example for you. This week our boiler broke, so we were left without warm water. We had to adjust and make do with what we did have. When something as simple as warm water falls away, you are suddenly reminded of the luxury we usually take for granted. Adjusting to inconvenience always excites me in some kind of weird way. I actually think it's kind of fun. We had to boil water on the stove before we could do the dishes and we could wash ourselves with cold water, so taking a shower was a lot less enticing. For me, a boiler is essential at least given the luxury circumstances in which we are easily able to have a working boiler in our home. Would a boiler be essential to survive? No, because we were able to manage without. But if it would be for an extended period of time, it would be very inconvenient. Having a boiler does elevate our quality of life. So according to my definition, a boiler is a keeper. Luckily, the boiler could be fixed, and after a few days we were able to take warm showers again. Which was the best shower I've had in a while. I was filled with gratitude and the warm water felt like a big hug. Having less stuff can help you see the luxury in the little things. It can help you change your perspective and appreciate the things you have in your home. Through decluttering, you create awareness about your belongings, which will have a ripple effect on many other aspects of life. 